Hello, welcome back. Uh, today I want to talk about the rolling mill and the rolling mill is designed to be able to take metal and thin it down. So a lot of times I'll buy thicker gauge metal knowing that I can always make it thinner, that it's harder to make it thicker. But one of the other really great processes with the rolling mill is to be able to roll print and make pattern and texture. And one of the things that's interesting to do in our first project will be um, our earrings is, is if you take a pattern, say some burlap, and you laminate metal in between the two and that it's annealed and you roll it through the rolling mill, you have a matchbook. So they match, which could be really great for earrings. Um, so I know I had a couple of matched ones around here somewhere. Oh yeah, these here have been rolled through the rolling mill and they match exactly with each other. Um, the other thing about rolling through the rolling mill is things elongate. And so what you want to be aware of is that maybe what you want to do is roll print your metal and then cut out the design afterwards if you have a really precise design. So this one too here, this is lace that's been roll printed. And after I roll printed a, a section of the metal, I cut this triangular shape out um, because that's I wanted this nice clean edge. Um, this is a really good example. I had a student who wanted to make a belt buckle with his initial CH and I told him the best way to do that would be to um, take the wire and hammer it in because the rolling mill stretches things and he says no I want to I want to do the rolling mill and I said well practice. So you can see that the C has been elongated that the metal has been run through this way and you can see that it is stretching the design a little bit there. Um, and so after he did this uh, print, he realized that he did not want this elongated, which is kind of a cool shape, um, in his design. And so then he went to using the binding wire taped down on the surface and hammered. Another thing that's really interesting that I did a years ago, I had a production line of jewelry where I took a one inch square and then I soldered two pieces of copper wire on it and I rolled it through the rolling mill till it became flat and flush. And you can see the elongation and the change that's taken place with this square because this metal is much thicker, so it's gonna grow much faster. And so you get some really beautiful organic shapes um, by doing that. And I also call this a fake inlay. So you solder the wire down. When you put it through the rolling mill, it stretches. And if you uh, do it carefully and anneal it often enough, you'll get a nice smooth flat surface on there so that it looks like it is inlay. Um, so the advantage to roll printing is, is that you can come up with a lot of designs. Um, the one thing that was really remarkable to me was this pattern here is a doily. So it's paper doily from a um, card store that I rolled through the rolling mill and the pattern on this held up really, really well. Um, so usually um, at Christmas time, if I get cards or thank you cards from people, I like to use the cards, that cardstock, that thickness to it to be able to get a really good print. But even the paper doilies rolled really well. And so one of the things I like my students to do is think about textures and when they're out and about, um, think about something that they maybe could roll through the rolling mill. We do have to be careful because this sandpaper here puts a beautiful roll printed pattern on it. But if you don't sandwich it between two pieces of metal, you will imprint this pattern on the rolling mill. And from then on out, everybody is going to have sandpaper roll printed surface. Um, but this is a roll printed surface here. Um, and it just kind of gives just really a nice um, sheen to it. It reminds me of uh, when you go skiing sometimes and there's just a little bit of ice that's been on top of the snow and it just makes it gleam and crystal a little bit. Um, so because we have to be concerned about what stuff we run through the rolling mill, I am kind of an avid believer that we always sandwich the material in between. That gives me two pieces that are identical. I can make earrings or if I mess one up, I've got the other one to work with. Um, and so when you're here in this studio, I really encourage people to make sure that you sandwich it. Another reason why is, is if you just put the material on the piece and you roll it through, 
the rolling mill is only coming in contact at one point and you kind of don't get as, I don't think you get as good of a, a print as if you've got another layer on here that's holding it in place so that it spreads the pressure across on that. So it's good to save the rolling mill by doubling up and it's also good that you'll get a better print. Um, another thing that just to talk about is looking for materials. We've got all kinds, this is gauze. When I had an injury, I used um, gauze on a finger for quite a while and then realized that it could be an interesting print. Um, this is something that somebody brought back from Hawaii. It was some um, coral. I wasn't happy that they brought up the coral back from Hawaii, but um, it printed pretty interestingly. Um, you can also take wire and make a wire design and then put that and run it through the rolling mill. And that gives a nice design. Um, I sent my students out to think about really interesting patterns and a woman came back with a uh, corn husk. And this is a corn husk roll printed pattern. And I really love the pattern because it reminds me of bark of a tree or something like that. So I use corn husk a lot now, thanks to her great idea. Um, and then the other thing is, is just regular paper can roll print really well. So sometimes I will take and cut out designs in, this is watercolor paper, which is pretty thick, and then roll them through the rolling mill. Sometimes I'll just take a plain piece of paper and roll it through the rolling mill just to give it a nice satin finish that's there. Um, so you can see that I took this piece, folded it in half, cut a bunch of little um, triangles out of it, laid this on top of this piece of paper and when I ran it through the rolling mill what you'll notice is is where there's no paper you get a beautiful shine and where the paper was it gives you kind of a really nice satin finish. Um, when I think about the rolling mill I was taught how to roll it and then roll it through the rolling mill once and then woohoo I'm happy and then I took a printmaking class from Amanda Knowles and here at North and I realized printmakers roll their prints through many times and that maybe I should start thinking about when I roll print doing more than one thing. So this piece here, I rolled through the rolling mill with, um, with sandpaper and then I uh, annealed it so it was soft again. And then I made little um, steel binding wires I was thinking about, uh, petroglyphs. And I put that on and I put another layer on it when I rolled it through the rolling mill. So now I'm beginning to get some depth and some interesting things happening with roll printing. So a one time roll might be nice if you're gonna come in and do a really intricate design. But if you're gonna use a surface, think of it as a canvas or a print where you can do multiple things to it to make it interesting. And roll printing is usually where I start um, when I'm thinking about patterning my metal is um, I um, decide on whether or not I want a perfect square or a round or whether I want to let it elongate. Um, but uh, roll printing is one of the first things we're going to do um, in making our earrings. And um, I hope people will start thinking about patterns and designs that they can work with on here. Erin, um, anything else I should mention? Okay, so. we'll be um, stopping here now and then we're going to meet up at the rolling mill and I'm going to talk about how to care for the rolling mills and expectations. Because we're under COVID, we're going to have to be using the rolling mill that Erin or I will be there to wipe it down every time somebody uses it. Um, um, but I do want everybody to have a chance to make some samples and figure out what they're doing. I think I'm going to try to roll print this. Um, I was thinking a little bit about um, um, rugs. Um, and, and Navajo patterns and stuff when I was thinking about doing this pattern. When I cut this out, I got left with all these little extra particles. And I'm thinking it might be fun not only to roll print this for the negative spaces, but what would it look like if I took all the scrap and then I put my metal back through the rolling mill? Could I get like a more random kind of um, confetti-like pattern to my metal? Um, so I always think about the idea and then Gary Griffin, my professor in grad school, always said sometimes the idea you think about isn't as interesting as the opposite idea. And so that's why I gathered these up thinking I should try roll printing 
the bits and parts and uh, pieces and I might find out that that doesn't work very well or I might find out that I like it better than the more um, organized pattern that's here. So I'll meet you over at the rolling mill and we'll take our annealed metal and see what we end up with.